Join us as career changers, company leaders, industry experts, and others who have been in your shoes share their stories, insights, and lessons learned to help you find enjoyment through employment in the tech world. I'm Nemo Ashong, and this is the Employment Podcast. Employees, how are you? Nemo here. Great to great to have this time to talk to you. It's actually interesting. I think one of the hardest parts about what I do is coming up with the takeaways from each episode. And the reason for this is that, well, there's actually a couple of different reasons. One of them is that, quite frankly, the guests on these podcasts, the employees that are here, they bring their A game. And the entire episode is littered with just amazing things that you can go and implement should you choose to do it. I think the second part about that that makes it so difficult is that each of us are in a different place in our journey. We're looking for something slightly different. We are, we might be career changers that are trying to figure out how do we get into a role in tech or just a different role in general. We might be people who have been successful in our careers and happy overall with our company, but struggling to figure out like, what's the next thing for me at this company so that I can continue my growth and my journey. Or you might be someone that has no idea what you want to do next, but you know that what you're doing right now just isn't cutting it. It isn't working for you. And I've also found that employees out there, there are a number of you that are in an echelon on your own where you've been able to accomplish more than most people around you might think is possible or most people around you might think is average or needed for your current level of career. And, you know, with that, that drive to continue moving forward can also be quite isolated and figuring out how do you surround yourself with other people who get you, who are going to continue moving you forward and really just be both a source of great connection and a source of great inspiration I mean, that's a, that's a really important thing. So we have all these people that are listening to the podcast. I just want to just acknowledge all of you right now and say, thank you. Thank you for doing what you can to move forward more in your experience and journey. But at the same time, it does make these takeaways somewhat tricky because quite frankly, they're, everyone's story is going to resonate or mean something a little bit different to each individual employee. And I'm okay with that. That's why we do the podcast. Cause and that's why I record this. I can have these conversations without you being a part of the experience, but I want you to be able to draw your own insights and then come and share. And well, actually to tell you the truth, come and act on it. There's enough information out there for you to get what you want in life. What's really missing, what the real challenge is, is the application. And I'll be real with you, employees, because I think it's more important for me to be honest with you than for me to come off as something that I'm not, because quite frankly, I'm human, you know, and there are a lot of times that there are things that I want to do that I don't apply myself. There are a lot of times where there are dreams and goals that I have in mind that just completely miss in terms of the time frames that I wanted to get. It happens. I'm not going to lie. It happens. But I'll say all that. And also note that you are listening to the Employment podcast right now, because that means that the things that I do push through and even amongst the things that I might miss, there's still application of the things that I've learned so that you and others can benefit from it. So I'm going to invite you to apply what you've been learning through a powerful one-on-one coaching session with me. You can go to employment.com slash coaching and fill out the brief application that's there. And we'll take this time to really dive into your story, into what you're looking to accomplish and come out there with help you get clarity on your vision. I'm one of the number one things that I hear various guests come on the show and share is, you know, the aspect of figure out what you want out of your life and work. And one of the number one challenges that I hear from employees, but I talk to them directly is I don't know what I want. I don't know how to find it. I don't know how to figure it out or I know what I want, but I don't know how to take my skills as I currently have them and translate them into this new world. I'm just not sure what to do with it. Question for you. How much longer do you want that to be a part of your story? And what would it be like for you if that was no longer something that was holding you back, but instead you had the clarity to help you take action, not just now, not just even three months from now, but to continuously move forward in your journey to enjoyment and all levels of it. In fact, I wish you even happier levels of enjoyment two years from now than you have right now. I'm okay. I'm, I'm right being greedy about it. Like, go ahead, do your thing, but do your thing and take action. I'm willing to help you do that if you're willing to, to join us and make a commitment by going over to enjoyment.com slash 
Cochin. Can't believe this is the last episode that's coming out in October. Um, and afterwards, we're going to be moving into some more group workshops. Um, there'll be, there may be some opportunities to work with me one on one that come up, but just given the feedback that I've been receiving and just seeing the ways that I can help you, I'm going to try and give you an opportunity to come in for a workshop session. I'll tell you more about that on Wednesday. Um, but if there's one thing that enjoyment should be associated with besides joy, is actually getting things done. So this is not a webinar. This won't be things where you just come in and listen and get more information. It's not a video course. It's a time for you to roll up your sleeves and be able to get clarity and leave with some concrete, tangible outcomes. I'm excited for you on that. I'm excited to spend some time with you. You'll hear more about that going forward as we go into workshop month in November. Uh, But for now, the gift of a complimentary coaching session is still available for you. Just go to enjoyment.com slash coaching. So I'm going to leave you here now with today's episode with Andrew Ash. And Andrew is an, uh, was an actor in New York City who then decided to find higher levels of enjoyment by moving to Seattle and getting engaged and becoming a software engineer for Amazon. From actor to engineer at one of the world's largest organizations and most impactful organizations right now. It's an amazing story of enjoyment, but even more amazing is the applications that he does and the frameworks that he gives us to look at as we try and find more enjoyment through our employment. But employees, I am so excited for you. So I'm going to let this episode take place. Enjoy. Hello and welcome to the Enjoyment Podcast, where we're focused on helping people just like you find enjoyment through employment. Employees, are you ready? Because today we have Andrew Ass on the show. Andrew, would you like to say a quick hello to employees? Hi, everybody. And Nemo, thanks so much for having me. I'm, I'm really, really excited to be here. Well, thank you for, for making the time here. I know I know there's so many exciting things going on in your life. And I'd like to let uh, MJOEs know just a little bit about you here before we get started. So Andrew graduated from Yale in 2008 with a BA in Humanities. After seven years as a professional actor in New York City, he decided to switch careers and enrolled in the software engineering immersive at Full Stack Academy. He just finished his first year as a front-end engineer at Amazon, and he's so happy he made the move to tech and to Seattle. So, Andrew, that's just a little bit about you right there. Uh, Why don't you let us know more about your life, love, work, and passion? Oh, man, absolutely. So uh, this has been a long journey for me. Uh, clearly going from acting to software development was a pretty huge gear change. Uh, I was a non-technical major and acting was really, really what I wanted to do in my twenties. And it was great. I had a great time. Uh, I was super happy as an actor, but, uh, I'm 32 now. Uh, I'm, I'm getting a little older. I'm in a steady relationship. I thought a little more stability seemed appealing. Tech was actually the end of a pretty long journey for me of looking at a couple of different careers. Uh, one that I thought about really seriously was, was law school. But ultimately, I decided that tech was was where I wanted to be and that I was willing to, you know, make the jump, uh, do this boot camp thing, give it a shot and uh, and see what happened. And uh, so that's that's pretty much how it worked out. I I was at this tech boot camp for three months, and then I was a teaching fellow for another three months. So I was basically going through the same curriculum again, but helping students in a sort of TA role. And uh, and then a two to three month job search, which was a big roller coaster, uh, a lot of ups and downs along the way. And uh, and then won the lottery with with this Amazon interview. Moved out here a year ago, and, uh, and I'm so so happy to be here. That's just really fantastic. And we're going to be diving into all, all these different parts of your journey here in just a little bit. I guess like my, now that you're out here in Seattle, I would love to, to like see what your life is like out there. Like, you know, like what are, what are some of the things that you do for fun here? I know that there's some, some, you're talking about stability. I just feel like life is good for you right now. Tell me about that. Sure. I, my life has uh, actually changed completely, uh, in, in the year since I got here. Uh, the most important thing is I've gotten engaged. Oh, congratulations. Uh, well done. <laughs> 
really lucky. Uh, and, and my fiance has an amazing job uh, as a teacher at Seattle Children's Hospital for children who are there for a while and who need school while they're there, uh, which is she's so, so happy there. Um, and what else? Uh, I really, really enjoy uh, the hiking opportunities that we have out here. I walk to work. Uh, we, we don't own a car that is actually possible in, in Seattle as well as in New York. We got a dog. His name's Obi, Obi Juan, the Chihuahua. Uh, he's, uh, he's just really, really great. And yeah, it feels like we've built a life for ourselves out here that, uh, we never would have had in New York. And so that's, that's really been great. I love this. I love this, this aspect of like building a life for yourself. And it's, it's really cool how, like you, you've incorporated all of these elements. Like kudos to you. Congratulations on engagement. But like, I also like, you have a dog. Like <laughs> you're going hiking. Uh, it's, it's really awesome because I really, I like how you said, like you built this life, you know, it was like something that, that you actually like sat down and created. And I think that's an important thing for us here as employees because the people who listen to this podcast us, uh, as employees in our community, we are creators in some, some sort of way. You know, we may, even if it's just, it, it just in the various ways the, about it, but we are all creators. And I feel like, like in this case, you're creating your life and how you want it to go. And that, that's exciting. That's really exciting. So, I mean, that's, it's an interesting place to be. And what comes to what, what I want to ask is something around like how you, how you made this happen. And the way I like to do this is frame it through a success quote or a mantra or some kind of model that you use to, to view the world. So would you mind sharing with us a success mantra? Sure. So my motto is a little bit more of a one-off. It's not really from anywhere in particular, but it's something that's been running through my head a lot over the last few years as I've been finding a new career, which is that our greatest ability is not any particular skill that we have, but the ability to reinvent ourselves. Tell me more about that. What I've realized bouncing from one possible career to another is that I very much enjoyed aspects of, uh, of each of them. And, and I think that any of them could have been a viable path to take. But ultimately, the thing that got me to where I am right now is not any particular skill, uh, not any one of the particular things that I'm good at. It was just really the, the courage to realize that I could just wake up the next day and just do something completely different. From, from what I had been doing before and that, that any of us can do that. You know, it just really takes the will, not any particular talent. Yeah, that's so fantastic. I think that's like a really fun place to play from when you're able to look out and say like, all right, I'm going to wake up today and I can change anything else around me and make, and make that happen there. So like, let's have that in mind here. Like, I, I really like this thing. Like we can, we can use this as our greatest ability right here, you know, to reinvent ourselves. So why don't we talk through a bit more about your journey here, uh, your, your path to finding enjoyment through employment and how you reinvented yourself along the way. Let's start off at, at like the beginning of your journey. Tell us, um, what, what comes to mind is like, what, got you started where you started um, and like, what were you looking for at that time? Maybe you can tell us a little bit about that and then we'll, I'll jump in with some additional questions around like how you made the transition from there. Sure. So I guess if we want to start at the beginning of the transition, that would probably start with dissatisfaction. So, uh, so let me begin there. Uh, I was having a great time as an actor. Uh, I feel like looking around, I was pretty successful, uh, relatively speaking, but I just didn't really see myself continuing to do that for the rest of my life. Um, outside of like the moonshot of becoming a movie star or something. And a lot of that had to do with hustle. Uh, that that's maybe not my favorite, uh, kind of mode to be in as I move through my life. And that acting really requires constant hustle because it's always about finding the next job, the next gig and networking. And while I think those are all really important skills and have certainly served me really well in the tech world, it's not what I wanted to be spending 40 hours a week doing. Uh, and so once I realized that, I mean, I knew I basically, I had to leave. Like, it's like a breakup, right? You, you probably realize at some point before you actually do it, that, that it's the right choice. And after that, it's really just about ripping off the Band-Aid and, uh, and making that transition as, as quick as you can. Uh, so I guess I kind of started from, well, here are my skills. 
I feel like I'd really rather be working a full-time job rather than this kind of constant gig economy situation. Uh, where can I find something that's stable and, you know, that pays me reasonably and has good work-life balance and takes advantage of the skills I have? And that was kind of my starting point. And it took a few years to figure that out. Yeah. Actually, I don't think that's an easy question to, to answer by any so, means. So I'm yeah. gonna, I'm going to ask then, like, because like like I, I think like that's an important place place to be here. And you know, some of the things that I'm hearing right now is that like like you were you were successful enough. Like things things could have just kept going. You know, like there wasn't anything that was like catastrophic around you. It was just more like you wanted to change things up for yourself because it just wasn't giving you that level of satisfaction. The, that aspect of hustling was a skill set that you had, but not a skill set that you wanted to use on a, you know, day in, day out basis. Is that right? Yes. Yes. That's, that's exactly right. So, all right. So tell us a little bit here about like, um, you said, it, you said it was, it was hard to kind of like figure out like what you wanted. It took you actually a couple, couple of years to, to actually go through that. What I'd love to do is like, just under, like understand, like maybe you can take us to like two or three moments that were, where you had some key distinctions of like, okay, I'm looking for more for, for X than Y, or I'm looking more for A than B. And maybe like help us, um, see how you were able to navigate that. Totally. Uh, and this may be a bit of a rabbit trail, but the first alternate career that I considered was actually the foreign service. Mm. Uh, so like being a diplomat in U.S. embassies in other countries, I thought I'm a pretty good communicator. I'm good at writing. Uh, I would appreciate the chance to serve my country. So I started with that. Uh, also like 180 degrees from acting and 180 degrees from, from software development. Uh, that actually lasted a couple of years, given that a shot. And, and while I studied really hard for the test and passed it every year, I just could not get that all day job interview in, in Washington, DC. Uh, it's, it's a pretty brutal selection process. I still think that I might have been happy there if, if things had worked out that way. Uh, but they didn't. And so my, my search kind of continued and I looked at law next. I thought, you know, again, I really enjoy communicating. I've got kind of a more analytical mind. And that's something that I miss using in acting uh, a little bit and that I would like to get more back into. And law seemed like a great outlet for that. Um, I took a class to prepare for the LSAT, studied really hard, did well, and actually ended up, um, that was my last day job as an actor, was tutoring at the place where I had taken a class for the LSAT. Uh, that was a lot better than, than the retail work I had had before that, a lot more flexible. And so I was happy there too. And I guess maybe my watershed moment, because I was really right on the cusp of applying to law school, was I was at a wedding. I was talking to a family friend and he said, well, listen, if I can't talk you out of being a lawyer, because he was a lawyer and he was trying to talk me out of being a lawyer, he said, then at least be a paralegal for a while so you can experience what it's like to be in a law firm. And I thought that was a great suggestion, but I took a look at myself in the mirror and I realized I wasn't willing to give up acting to become a paralegal. And then I guess I decided, well, if I'm not willing to give up acting for that, am I going to be willing to, you know, spend the years in school, rack up a good amount of debt, uh, and then come back and basically be at that point again? Uh, and that was about when, when the job offer came through for, for the tutoring. And so I thought, well, this, this kind of seems like the path right now. You know, this job has more stability than what I had before and I can continue to act. Uh, so that, that was kind of another like settling point, but that still wasn't quite enough. Uh, you know, it, I was still kind of freelancing both for, for my day job to pay my bills and, you know, with my passion, with acting, and neither one of them was really quite satisfying me by themselves or together. And so I finally arrived at software development, which I thought at the time and still really do think was like just a really good fit for my skills and what I was looking for with that laundry list that, that we went over earlier of what, what I was looking for out of a job. And so then I guess it really just came down to, uh, you know, making the commitment to put the money down and take the time off to, to go to a boot camp. Uh, so it was really just about making that decision and studying pretty hard to, to get into the boot camp that I wanted. Full Stack Academy it was wonderful, wonderful place. And, uh, and yeah, so that's, that's how I ended up, uh, at the boot camp. The thing that I'm really interested in here is like, there, there are probably other employees out there that are also considering a boot camp. And I'll be curious as to like, you know, what made you go with Full Stack Academy 
And probably the the interesting question here, and you, let me know if you feel comfortable going here. It's like, how did you decide to make that commitment? Because these the boot camps are not like they're not inexpensive, you know. No. Yeah. So so like let's so like let's really honestly, I, I say I, I want enjoy, enjoyment to be something that's not Googleable, and I and so I'm going to ask that question. Like, how did you how did you decide that? How did you get comfortable totally. with making that that decision? And let's let's go there. So what really led me to make that decision was mostly numbers. I, I did my research. I thought this seems crazy. This is this is more money than I've ever decided to spend at one time on anything. How exactly can I justify this? And the answer was that 97% of graduates end up with a job. And one thing that distinguished full stack that really drew me to it was that graduates end up with a title of software engineer as opposed to junior software engineer. And that that uh, comes with a pretty significant difference in salary. And uh, so that that was super important to me. I think not all boot camps are necessarily created equal. Full stack was really, really selective. I really kind of busted my butt to, to study for the admissions test. And it was really challenging. And that that to me was was really good reassurance that that this was going to work out well. So I guess to the employees who are listening, what I would say is make sure to do your homework and decide for yourself that what you're going to be getting out of this boot camp is statistically probably going to be amazing, right? Uh, that that's that's really important. Awesome. So take us now. You're in the boot camp. Like, tell us about how you maximize that experience to like get you get you the, the place that you are. And really what will be really fun is to see how you maximize your time there and then look at the, the period of time after you finish the boot camp to get in the job. Cause I think like uh, a lot of people are really curious about how, do, so how does that actually translate to the job? The job interview process was probably the most interesting part of the whole journey for sure. So, so I'm definitely going to, going to devote a lot of attention to that. So I mostly just told myself that this was my time to focus. And the way that uh, David Yang, the co-founder of Fullstack, put it on the first day was that this is high leverage time. Like you really don't often have three months of your life to completely transform yourself. And so really think carefully about how you're going to use your time. And so it was kind of like a monastery. You know, I was there for 60 to 80 hours a week every week for for three months. And I I pushed myself really, really hard. I I stayed for, you know, late uh, several hours after after class ended every day, just doing extra prep work. I really focused on the interview process because I knew that my goal was to work at a larger tech company. and, And the big ones tend to have like a very lengthy, structured interview process where everybody pretty much knows exactly what that's going to be like. And it's just a very particular thing to prepare for. So I I worked hard on that. And then something that I also did, especially during the second half, when I was a teaching fellow, was to find personal connections and network and get referrals uh, to, to the companies that I wanted to work for. I found that part of the process really important. And although, like I said, I'm not necessarily in love with hustling, I think acting prepared me pretty well for for that particular phase of the job search. And I think there are a lot of different strategies that you can use when when you're looking for job leads. Like one would be, you know, just cold applications like everywhere. And I kind of pursued like the opposite extreme of like very few applications, but like all personal referrals uh, and, you know, a really high percentage got converted into interviews. I guess it's like animals, right? It's like insects have like 60,000 babies or something versus the mammal has like one but really takes care of it. Like that, that was more my strategy. And I found that to, to work really, really well. I, I had a lot of interviews lined up and, and it's a numbers game. Uh, a lot of them went really badly. Uh, and a lot of them were, were amazing. Uh, and, uh, and all together that made for a really successful job search period. Not easy, but successful. Wow. This, I'm hearing this commitment to transformation there. And, <laughs> I, like this idea of high leverage time and, you know, m 2 es I'm going to invite you to look at where you are right now and invite you to have some high leverage time. You know, like 
Andrew created that time. It was great that the, 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 one of the founders came and highlighted like, this is, a, this is a special opportunity, but you know, you, he created that time and took advantage of it in the way that, that he wanted to. There was no extra time in the day. It was the same days that all of us lived, you know, but he created this and said, okay, at this time, I'm going to make the most out of this period of time here. And I, and you can do that right now with what you're doing, right? Wherever you are in your life. So I'm going to encourage you to, to think about what, what would your high leverage time be like? Even if, even if, if it isn't 24 hours in the day that you can have it, it's just three hours every day where you're just in that zone. I think that's a really cool concept. And um, if you don't mind, Andrew, I'm going to be bringing that to the people that I work with directly through enjoyment because I think that's such a, it's an important concept to have in mind. So there are two things here that I think are really interesting. So firstly, you're saying that big organizations kind of have um, an interview process that is more predictable and, and you, you can basically, did you like research that? Was that something that came up through the boot camp? How did you figure out what, what, what that process was going to be like? That's a great question. I think I realized it through the process of the boot camp and just having a really targeted job search. And uh, I was very fortunate at the boot camp to have uh, these career advisors who really, really knew the industry well and knew exactly what that was going to look like. Uh, we also took an hour at the beginning of every, of every morning to do whiteboard problems because that's the kind of uh, unique aspect of these interviews for for programming at at large tech companies is this very kind of abstract not all that much like sitting at a computer screen necessarily but like computer science fundamentals uh so so it became clear after a while that this structure was really what what was going to be important in the interview process so i just really zeroed in on that um and during the fellowship uh i made sure to take time to study uh, a particular book, Cracking the Coding Interview, which is pretty well known as like the industry standard for preparing for these kinds of interviews. Yeah, and just really zeroing in on what was particularly important for me and my particular job search. I didn't take so much time developing my own portfolio of independent projects, uh, which I think is important for for people who are looking for, for other kinds of software development work, uh, particularly if you're looking for something that's going to involve a lot of front-end design, I think that that could be really useful. But for me and my path, I knew it was going to be about these like computer science fundamentals, algorithms, data structures. And so, so that's really what I focused on. So I think that's really amazing here. And one of the the second part I wanted to go into is like that second half there, because from a strategy perspective, this is fundamentally different than where I see a lot of people going with their, their approach. And um, to be honest, I really love it. Like being able to sit down and say like, this is what I want. This is the direction that I want, that I want to go. Um, and having that clarity in terms of the types of roles you wanted, the types of organizations that, that you wanted to, to go for I mean, all that did was just give you more of an opportunity to a end up being happy at the end with a result that like, you know, actually filled you up, um, but then also gave you direction for what you needed to work on. I think that's something important to pull out here. That's one of my takeaways from it. What, what was one of your takeaways from like having this like flipping the entire process on its head and, and being targeted? I think it's about starting with your goal and working backwards, right? Figuring out exactly what your dream situation is, is going to be your dream job and then figuring out exactly what's missing between here and there and then not sweating the other stuff. I think maybe that's, that's the biggest part of it in a nutshell because it's overwhelming, right? I mean, there's, there's no way for me, you know, that there was no way to like to really go a hundred percent on a portfolio and really go a hundred percent on interview questions at the same time. And it would be really, really easy to get overwhelmed. And so I think it's about figuring out what are the pieces that are really needed and then just really drilling into them uh, and, and making sure that, uh, that, that you can get those particular big rocks and, and not sweating everything else because there's so much. 
Andrew, you are fantastic there. I really love this this idea of just not sweating everything else, and it's there's so much to sweat about. And I love like I think that's I think that's what makes it seem so so much fun to me. Where it's like, all right, cool, you did a lot of work. You put in a ton of time. You were you set aside an hour every day just to whiteboard and build that skill there. You know, like like it's there were there was real work done, and kudos to you for doing that. And but on top of that, kudos to you for taking the time to say what actually matters what do i actually want and how do i go forward from there so employees like let's, let's take that into account here and see how we can use that to to move forward so uh what i'd like to do andrew is go through um i'd love to go to a moment that you had that was of um particular difficulty for you um i think it's important that we go here like we're clearly seeing that you're enjoying life uh and that things are looking really great for you, but you know we know that it's not how the path of life always goes. So, can you take us to a, a moment that was particularly difficult, and let us know about the steps that you took to overcome that? Yeah, absolutely. So, when I think about difficult moments in this journey, definitely what comes to mind is the job search process. That was just as I said earlier, like a roller coaster. Like there were days that were the best day of my life and days that were the worst day of my life. So let's let's start with one of those, which was uh, my very first kind of nibble uh, from, from a tech company. Uh, and I won't say which one, but they uh, provided a coding challenge. And so the idea was that, and this is a pretty common practice, uh, that they give you something that your program is supposed to do. And then you just go out and build an app that does it. So I was pretty excited about this company. It was like a pretty hot startup. And I thought, I'm just really going to knock this one out of the park. And so I worked on it for about one 16 hour binge, uh, because I, I had run kind of far behind, uh, for, for their deadlines, uh, in the process of pursuing other job leads. I was like, you know, this is the first one. I'm just really going to make this one like be an offer. Let's just do it. Uh, and at the end of those 16 hours, I was pretty proud of my work. I, uh, I really felt like I hadn't cut any corners. Like I had, uh, like I had interpreted the spirit of what they were looking for and then some, and that, you know, I had sacrificed a, a lot of time and effort to, to create something that, that was really great. So, uh, so I sent it in, a uh, couple days later, got a response from the recruiter that he couldn't get it to run, that it just didn't work. And that given the volume of applications that they had, that, you know, he wasn't really able to offer any time for debugging or advice or anything like that. And thank you very much. So I guess I took that. I was like desperate. And so what I did was I actually like spun it up and deployed it as a website within about 10 minutes because it did work perfectly. And I still have no idea why why it didn't work uh, on, on their computers or whatever they were doing. And uh, so 10 minutes later, I responded with an email like, look, here, the website's up. Uh, you can, you know, do what the prompt asked me to do. What do you think? And, and I never heard back from them. And so that, that was my, again, my very, very first nibble. The day after that, I had my first like major onsite interview and I was just devastated. Uh, I thought, uh, I am like really O for one, like so hard here. Uh, and like, here's this really, really important opportunity ahead of me, just like immediately after this tremendous failure. Uh, how how am I going to make that work? Wow. So let 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 me ask you. How did you make it work? You know, honestly, looking back, I don't really know. Uh, I I remember I was super super anxious during that interview the next day. However, I guess it just happened to hit a sweet spot that uh, that had been missing from from the first one, and that interview actually did end up with a job offer, which was a big confidence booster. So what's the lesson of this? I guess, I don't know. I mean, hopefully it's not just luck uh, because, because again, I did come into this second interview in like a really bad psychological, emotional place. And yet somehow it still worked out. I think that long-term it's, it's about the fact that it's a numbers game, right? And that you just kind of have to pick yourself up and dust yourself off. And that, I guess we could say that that first, Failure was really just a stroke of bad luck because somehow it like just didn't work on their computer, right? That's not really about me or, or about you, uh, who's listening. You know, that's just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. And the key to success ultimately was just to have enough of these random dice rolls until 
some of them started to work out. And then some ones that I was really excited about started to work out. And then the big one, which was Amazon and was like exactly what I wanted, did. Uh, so I think, I think the, le- the success here was, was really the numbers game, not really, uh, anything that, uh, that I was doing to like recover emotionally from that, just to kind of keep, keep rolling the dice, just show up. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. Cause like, I'm like, in my mind, I'm not sure that the two things are all that separate, right. To be able to go and say like, this is a numbers game. Well, then that a, a part of me feels that you were able to kind of detach a little bit from every individual, um, uh, instance such that you're like, all right, this is like, that's, that's how that one, that's how that one get went. Cause I got to reinvent myself today. New yeah. game, you know, let's play this one here. Uh, even, even with, even with all these things with you. So it's, it's interesting cause it's, um, I just don't want to downplay, but like, I don't want to upplay any kind of like, I went through an emotional, like I went to a cave and I came out as a new person. Like that's, that's not it. But even just having that philosophy, like it is a numbers game. This one didn't work out. And I just need to like come out with a, I have a fresh slate right now. Um, I think, I think that's something that employees can walk away with and, and like implement, uh, into, into their, into their journey here. So what's coming to mind here is like, I want to flip things around and I want to get like a, a picture of like, like life for you now at Amazon. Like, so you're a software engineer. Tell me about that. Tell me about what, what, like you've gone through so much here, right? Tell me about what, what it is that like, that you do now that is bringing you joy. Like, tell, tell, like help me, help me understand that a little bit. Totally. Well, I guess one of the coolest things about it is that the journey just hasn't stopped. It's accelerated, if anything, because this company by itself is like a whole universe to, to be a part of. And at one year in, you know, I'm still kind of at like at the bottom of this ladder, like looking up at all of the incredible things happening above me. Uh, I've been learning so fast. And like the more that I learn, the more that I realize what what I don't know. And to continue growing that uh, is really, really exciting. So that's that's probably the single biggest aspect. Uh, Then the second one is just the impact is is really, really exciting. I work on the Your Orders page, which is great because it's really easy to explain to my mom and dad what I do. Uh, You know, so this is just the page that you look at when you're like, where's my stuff? Uh, I haven't found it yet. And so, you know, millions and millions of people look at it every day. I use it every day. I'm my own customer. And like when I make some really minor style change so that like there's an arrow that used to look kind of 1995 and like now it looks great. Uh, and, and I can look at that on my own phone, you know, uh, that's, that's a really great fulfilling feeling too. Wow. That's spectacular. Like in that aspect of like the fulfilling feelings there, uh, can you take us to uh, a project or an instance that you had in the last year that, you know, really brought you some great joy um, and just like really walk us through a specific moment or story where you you know, it might just be your proudest professional moment. Can you let us know a little bit about that? Sure. And I guess this is maybe kind of indicating the fact that I feel like I'm still in a stage of rapid growth, that what comes to mind is what's actually happening right now. Uh, when when we uh, finish up this interview, I'm going to go back and simulate uh, Christmas level traffic on, on our page. Um, so I've, I'm kind of in charge of that for the team, making sure that we're ready for like the Black Friday and the Christmas rush. And that's been really satisfying because there's a ton of ambiguity there uh, for various technical reasons. We we haven't had to do this ourselves uh, until this year. And so to be able to kind of uh, trailblaze this, this path for the team uh, as one of its newest engineers has been uh, really, really satisfying. Congratulations there. That's like really excited to, to, to hear. And, um, I, it's, it's really cool to me to be like, wow, like in just a span of, of, of time here, you're already like able to pull out to step into something that is completely new, uh, in this area and, and, and really lead that from, from your, your, your position. So congratulations. Congratulations on that. Thanks, Nemo. So let's go ahead and like wrap things up here. I guess what I love to do is, 
um, get a little bit of a picture of what you would recommend for employees if for those that are looking to find that kind of like joy in their uh, through the work that they do right now. And what I'd like to do is bring it down to something concrete, like step by step uh, action for what they can do in the next seven days to move them a step closer. What would you recommend for employees to do in the next seven days to get one step closer to employment? I guess it all depends on where you are in in your journey as as you're thinking about transitioning to to a new job. But the main thing that I think I would say is uh, just picture exactly what you want, uh, not what is going to be the easiest next step to take, not you know what is the thing around here that excites me the most right now, but to really like take a thirty thousand foot view of like what could I be doing that would make me as happy as possible? And then just don't settle. Just go for that uh, and, and work backwards from that and make that happen. I, if an actor can be a software engineer, anybody can be a software engineer. So, you know, just do for yourself really what, what, what you want. Thank you so much for that, Andrew. I feel like this is, this is a theme. So employees, there are a couple of different things out here that you can just like, just take action on right here. Um, and, I'm going to make myself available. If you need to like talk through something about like and, and figure out how you can picture what you want and figure out how to, to go through it. I know that sometimes it's easier said than done. Like I'll carve out time and we'll talk, go to like enjoyment.com slash coaching and we'll just sit and we'll talk and we'll work through this here because having that vision uh, really does seem to be an important area there. So uh, Andrew, I want to give you a chance here in, in our time here before you go off and uh and, you know, make the world a better place through this simulation here. Um, what is one thing that you would like employees to, uh, to walk away with after this conversation? I think I would just repeat the motto that I started with, which is that remember like your greatest gift and your greatest talent isn't that you're really good at math or you're a wonderful public speaker or you're an awesome networker. Although I'm sure that like any or all of those and more things is true, but Your greatest asset is not any of those things. Your greatest asset is that you can just go into a cocoon whenever you want and come out as something completely different. And we can all do that. And remember, that's the best gift because it means that you can really do anything. Well said. Wow. Andrew, thank you so much for this. This is like... This is, it it excites me. It feels, uh, it fills us all with energy. And, um, I'm, I'm really excited to see what what we all decide to come out with, uh, when we do emerge from that cocoon there. Um, so Andrew, thank you for taking the time, your, and sharing your energy, your experience, your knowledge, and just being quite open about how, how you did this here. I wish you all the best. Here's to doing the things that bring you joy each and every day. Take care. Thank you so much, Nima. It's a very beautiful thing that we have going on here at Joy's where we can get a story like Andrew's and know that it isn't just chance. It isn't just happenstance. It isn't just something reserved for, but for special people. You know, I really look at enjoyment as a place of inclusion, a place of belonging and a place of us being able to come together as a group of driven individuals who collectively end up creating more possibilities than we would have ever even dreamed of alone. Andrew's thing is playing a numbers game and he's used it to successfully get him into the various stages of his life. But the numbers game was not just done haphazardly. In fact, he was incredibly strategic about it, making sure he knew what would typically come up during an interview, what kinds of places would want to utilize the skill sets that he's developed and what types of roles would most excite him in terms of the work that he would be doing. And then he played the numbers game on top of that. So I'm Joyce, I want to invite you to take action on what Andrew suggested for us to go through and clarify your vision of what you want out of your life and work and then work your way backwards to figure out what you need to do now. And here goes the deal. It would almost never work out exactly as you think it will. So let's focus right now on just that first step, because just getting that first step in play, getting that momentum. In fact, let's say the first and the second, because I heard somebody the other day, like the second step is sometimes the hardest. So we'll get the first and the second. Let's not add on the third. No, I'm joking. But let's get some momentum. Let's get it moving. Uh, and let's share about it. All right. So come over to the Employment community where you can find the home of the employees over at employees.com and 
Join this conversation. Regardless of when you hear this, you have the opportunity to be a part of it by just using the hashtag, hashtag joining 34. I'm thoroughly looking forward to seeing what you all come up with and taking those first two steps with you as a community. Here is the doing what brings you joy each and every day. Take care, employees.